Hey, welcome to the channel everybody. And here we've got my 2004 Porsche 996 Carrera 4S convertible. It's the longest name in history, obviously. This car's called Pepper. That's because my other half says I have to name them all or something, I don't know, because it's got a cute face, it needs to have a name. Who knows? <laughs> But uh, like I said, this car is called Pepper and it's going to be one of the cars on the channel that we're going to show you um, all the sort of things that we do with them. And the first thing to kick off this car is how we averted it getting set on fire. Completely set on fire. That's because a little while ago we had a bit of, I was, uh, I was driving somewhere, nice Sunday afternoon, going for, bre going for breakfast on a Sunday afternoon. Here comes a car, I'm going to have to wait for that to pass. So yeah, it was a nice Sunday morning uh, and I was driving out for breakfast and I hear this pop and guess what happens? Smoke starts coming out of the dash. I'm not exaggerating, that literally happened. And I quickly phoned the fire brigade because I think I know how this goes. It gets uh, you know set on fire like a light really quickly. Cars go up really fast if you don't know that. So quickly pulled over, called the fire brigade. There was still smoke coming out of the vents in the car like a burning electrical smell. So I quickly decided to take the battery off, which thankfully stopped that arcing, and the car's gonna drive through the camera shot. There you go. <laughs> so, like I said, so I quickly took the battery off and that stopped the electrical arcing, which definitely would have torched the car. And as it turned out, it was the actual stereo in there. The original double din screen from 2004 had decided to give up on life and it wanted to take the whole car with it. Uh, we didn't let it happen and now we've got a really nice new Pioneer head unit in there. We're using the Bose amp system that was stock standard but it sounds really good and I'm going to show you in this video how we did it. It was pretty complicated, I'll try and keep it as short as possible uh, but hopefully it'll be useful to one of you guys doing the same sort of thing on your Carrera 4S from this sort of age. So uh, let's get straight into it. And here we are in the dismantled 996. Um, it's a bit tight in here, but I'm going to try and show you what we've done. So there's quite a lot of wiring going on here. Now, what we had to do in the end was buy this Connects 2 harness. I'll try and show you which bit that is. So it's this box here for the optical. And as you can see, there's the uh, optical connector that just slots in there. I don't know if you can see that connection. There you go. So those that converts the signal from the aftermarket head unit into an optical one. So I can still use the Bose system and the Bose amp that I've got in this vehicle. Um, it takes two phono uh, outs, which is standard. So it doesn't really matter what head unit you've got. Um, you can plug these in. It takes a few signals from the connectors. Obviously there's no brown connector here because I've got an amp. Um, so there's no speaker outs, just uh, power and some other things. Uh, we've got this whole wiring harness here, which is a bit of a nightmare. Hang on. Um, it's got another box here, which converts some signals from the vehicle. So because I've got an older one, it doesn't plug in both sides. But if you've got a 997, you'll find that you've got an extra plug here. Um, and that does steering controls and things like that, which I don't have. Um, which means that for me, some of these wires don't actually do anything. So for example, the pink wire here, which, in fact, both of these, all of these, in fact. So the pink wire is supposed to be a signal for speed. The green one there for a signal for the handbrake and the purple and white one here is supposed to be a signal for reverse and hope you know if I had those signals on the vehicle I could plug them straight into the into the pioneer harness here which has some cables so here's my reverse cable for example it has some cables to accept those but uh, I'm getting no signal I tested those I'm getting no signal on those um, so I had to make my own, which is what I was trying to avoid, but never mind. Try and rattle through this, a few things we've got here, right? So I had to make a speed, um, I had to make a reverse signal here so the camera knows when to come on. And all I've done is connected it onto the back of the 
Pioneer harness here, and there's a little tag that tells you which one to. There we go, a little tag that tells you which wire to connect to. Uh, and I've run that up through the dash, um, under the steering wheel here, down there past the fuse box. Uh, and I'll show you where. Um, because I've got memory seats, which it means the mirror mirror on the passenger side dips when I go into reverse. So there's actually a signal. Um, if you come along here, take this trim off, and you come onto the under seat harness here, there is actually a signal here that tells it when to go in reverse and change that mirror. Um, and I've just tapped onto it down here with the least amount of damage possible. I don't know if I can show you that. It's just tucked away in there. There's my purple wire. Um, and it is the black and blue wire, but there are two. So you are gonna have to um, test. You can actually see here, there's two. Those are both black and blue. You're gonna have to test which one of those is actually the reverse. Uh, signal that you need and it gives a positive uh, 12 volts when it's in reverse um, So run that up there this vehicle also being a 2004 it doesn't have a, a switched ignition to the stereo so there's a there's a permanent 12 volt supply on the yellow wire here and here we have 12 volts on there, but if you test this red wire, nothing happens, whether you turn the key or nothing. And most stereos now need that 12 volts to know when to turn on, so I had to also make one of those. Um, again, fairly simple. You see here, I've uh, disconnected this red wire and this red socket, which is on the Pioneer harness, and then run my own wire. Again, red one all the way up there behind the dash through under here and it comes down and all we've done here is put a little fuse tap in um, and this is a fuse E8 we've used because um, that is a switched switched plus 12 volts. So that turns that on. Uh, as you can see run from there we've also got my USB connector. I'm going to hang it down here. As I always have my phone on this side of the car on this vent there. Okay, so we had to put the DAB aerial up there, as you can see on the window, and we ran a cable down here behind the dash, took some more panels out under there, and we came in here. Somewhere here it is. There's that one. Um, and I also then had to take, you can see it going into my harness here, Here's the positive, I don't know why they made it black wire, but here's the positive 12 volt feed for the aerial. And that goes back with the red wire all the way down to my fuse tap. Uh, and it take, this aerial takes a ground from the side of the frame of the car up there. Uh, we, also had to, we also had to run the microphone. I thought about tapping into the, the standard mic, but that comes out here, as you can see on the dash. Um, here it is, uh, and I'm going to put that in the standard mic position on the surround, the cover that goes on here. In fact, I've got it here. So in the 996, when this cover goes back on, that little hole there is where the stock microphone would be if you had telephone prep. So um, just pop that cover out and you can mount your aftermarket mic in there behind the cover. Also means that you don't have to have like a really annoying little clip or something up here on your on your visor. Uh, most stereos now, Pioneer and oh, I think all of them will do this, uh, you have this little parking brake, this green wire for parking brake, which you have to put onto the parking brake switch. It's a real fiddle to take this whole centre console apart to get to the parking brake switch. As you can see, I had a go, but there's a lot more work involved. Um, you, you do this at your at your own risk, but to save myself time, all I've done is tap it onto a ground that was already uh, tapped up here. I've just added my wire on, so now it sees ground all the time and it will work. Like I say, that's not uh, the correct way of doing that. No problem with the camera there, but we'll uh, we'll start again. I was just explaining what we did with the video uh, backup camera because that was a bit of a fiddle to to get in. Um, so I'm just going to show you the wiring that we did for that.
another wire that we needed here. This is for the reverse camera. Um, this was actually quite a lot of effort. So as you can see, I've got one wire here for my video feed that goes in the back of the stereo and that runs as usual. All the way around here, what I've done is I've put this whole loom together of all the bits I need that come out, come out there together. Um, and I've chose to run that down here where there is also a positive feed for the camera I've tapped onto there and there's also a negative feed for the camera that comes up um, and just behind the dash here you've got four grounding screws so if you take this um, dash piece out you'll see four grounding screws on the support frame behind there so I've run the ground feed for the camera up and put it on there and uh, the complicated bit so again ground camera all the way down underneath here so what you want to do is open the roof just to the point where it starts to move here so it's just come away from the front and this section at the back is now up which lets you get down if i can get the camera in there basically down in here um this is where the, the hood sits when it's when it's put away and this carpet you can lift out and you can run the cable underneath on a coupe that's a bit more tricky because you've got to reach in the back here um, stick your hand right in behind the panels and it's a bit of a pain so in this it's actually uh, actually a lot easier and uh, what you'll find is if we carefully open this up there we go what you'll find is, I don't know if I can show you, but up here, behind the driver's side, I can't really show you, but there is basically all the way up here, you'll find a rubber, a uh, big rubber grommet where the factory uh, wiring harness comes through and there's another, uh, another connector at the top that you can bring your wire in through and uh, what we've done I can just about see it here I've run it all the way around with some cable clips around under the headlight here and I've just put a tiny little hole in there and put the cable through and stuck it on um, to make that hole really small what I did was cut the wire um, uh, for two reasons so I could push the blank wire through make it really small uh, and I'll put a picture up on the screen of what I did, but also because when you take this bumper off, and in fact, much like the people before me had done with these parking sensors that were fitted aftermarket, they just ran the wires up to the sensors, stuck the sensors in place, um, and put the bumper back, bumper back on. And the problem with that is, sorry for that car to go past. The problem with that is when you take the bumper off, you then have a problem because you can't, you can't. Uh, take it off the car properly because all your cables are fixed and attached to the bumper and there's no way of disconnecting them. Um, so what you need is some of these little waterproof plastic electrical connectors. You have to s cut and strip and put all the wires in. So you've got two little, I've got two little plugs in there behind now to go with the one that also does the lights for the number plate. Uh, I think, let's see, I've been doing a bit of other work in there. I've got a glove covering my air intake for the moment. I think that's probably probably it. So um, yeah, bit of a fiddle, quite a lot of work. It doesn't really matter what uh, what head unit you've got. I've got a Pioneer one here, but it'll be pretty much the same. This 996, 2004, it's got the Bose unit. I got the doors off so you can't actually uh, see the speaker covers, but it's got Bose um, and the opt clamp in the front of the car which means you need this connection system. Probably way more work than I was uh, anticipating on but now it's done and it sounds really good so um, what I'm going to do is get all this put back together and I will give you a little demonstration. So this guy is uh, all singing and all dancing it wasn't even that expensive but we should have any second now Apple CarPlay will appear. There it goes. There, oh, there we go, and Apple CarPlay is on. We've got all the apps here. We can scroll through those. Let's turn the volume down for a minute. Wherever I just went into there. Yeah, WhatsApp, Waze, everything like that. Um, one of the ones I use a lot is uh, Spotify. 
Okay, we've just turned it on and um, I was just about to play some music there and then I realised that probably I can't play that music for you because these guys might get annoyed and YouTube will flag me and all kinds of stuff. So you can't actually hear it, you'll just have to take my word for it that it sounds amazing. Um, but as you can see, we've got all kinds of functions here. This guy's got um, Spotify, even if you're not connected to Apple CarPlay, but I tend to use Apple CarPlay all the time. And obviously we've got all the usual apps in here that you could possibly need. And uh, it sits really quite nicely in this surround. We've got rid of the, um, the old CD holder that was here. We've got a nice little cubby for my phone. So yeah, works really nice. And that's what you can uh, look forward to if you get all that work done. The only small problem is my cup holder being here. When I have cups in, it's kind of awkward to get to it. But other than that, I think it works pretty nicely. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing your... Oh, look, I've broken that now. Oh, no. <laughs> right, I'll sort that out in a bit. Anyway, I look forward to seeing what you guys do in your 996s as well. So that's it, ladies and gents. That's the end of this video. Uh, I've shown you pretty much everything I could on the install of the stereo here. It was a really long drawn out process. It took us several weeks to get this finished. I had to order parts, send them back because they said they were the right runs. Then they weren't, you know, it was like a nightmare. So I tried to edit that down to be the shortest possible version of putting a stereo and a DAB radio and a reverse camera and all that sort of stuff into this car. And hopefully it helps you guys do the same. I definitely recommend it. If you've got this sort of car and you've got the Bose already, but you're a bit bored of all that old, you know, early 2000s screen rubbish with sat nav that doesn't work anymore, then this is definitely a mod for you. Definitely take the time and do all the bits that I did and keep the Bose system in play because that amp and that dedicated sub, like you can't, you can't beat the sound. It's amazing now. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration in a minute. Before we end this video, you probably won't be able to hear how good it is over the speakers on your laptop or however you're watching this, but trust me, it is excellent. And if you decide to do it, perhaps do it before the stereo, the head unit decides it wants to you know, set fire to your car, because that, that, that would be sad. I'm really sad that I didn't actually catch any of that on camera. I mean, I was too busy trying to stop the car from catching a light, but genuinely there was smoke coming out of the dash into the cabin. Um, I, I had no idea what was going on originally. So anyway, we saved it. Pepper lives to see another day and we'll have some more videos coming on this soon. So if you like what you saw, if I was entertaining, if I maybe helped you um, understand what to do in your car, then hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video.